Anybody know what this is? Stick around, you'll find out. Hi there, I'm Paul. Welcome to my messy workshop. A little while ago, I did a video about the dowling jigs in my shop. I received a comment from Gordon Atkinson uh, over at Atkinson Product Design, and he manufactures a dowling jig called the Dowel Wizard. And it's a little bit different design. And we got together and he agreed to send me one free of charge if I would do a review on it on my YouTube channel. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to give this uh, Dowling jig a run for its money. Just the initial look of it, this thing looks like it's very well made. It's made out of aluminum. It has replaceable guides for different size drills to drill different size dowel holes. It comes with a 3 8 bushing, a quarter inch bushing, and a 3 16 bushing. The way this works is you put it on a piece of wood. Get a little closer here. You put it on a piece of wood and it self-centers. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this and pretend that it's a face frame. I'm going to drill a couple dowel holes here, a couple dowel holes in the end of a, a piece, and we're going to dowel them together and just see how accurate it is. So uh, stick around and I'll be right back. The dowel wizard comes with a nice set of instructions and an owner's manual tells all the different ways you can use it. By the way, their website is www.dowelwizard.com. I'll put that website down in the, in the description of the show. So what we're going to do, we're going to pretend we're making a face frame. What we do is we make a tick mark about in the center of our joint or Actually, it's centered. Be it's going to be centered between the two holes we're going to drill. So we just make a tick mark there. Take the dowel wizard, and it has a registration mark right there. That black line is a registration mark. And we just line that registration mark up with the line we made on our piece of wood, clamp it down, and drill our holes. Unclamp it, remove our dowel wizard, and there we have the first two of our holes drilled. My drill leaves some ragged edges there. That I need to sharpen that drill or replace it. So I'll just clean those up a little bit, but that has no effect on how the dowel wizard works. Now we'll take the dowel wizard on our other piece. We'll line up our registration marks, clamp it in place and drill our holes. One thing I noticed is in the dowel wizard there are some relief channels here. You can just see them. Yeah, right there. Those relief channels right there. That's to get rid of wood chips so they don't get all bound up in your in your in your jig. So now we got our holes drilled. Take a couple dowels. Put it together. Oop, I got that upside down. And we have a nice smooth joint. That is that is just as, as flat as it was when I had it laying on the table. Very nice. Now if we wanted to put that joint down here to where it was like this, that's just as easy to do. It doesn't have to be up here, it can be anywhere. So what I'll do is I'll make another tick mark like right here. I'll line the dowel wizard up with that tick mark, put the clamp on it, drill the holes, Ta 
take the clamp off, take the dowel wizard off, and get it facing the right way again. Put it on and there it is, just as nice as the other joint. Just perfect. So that's some end grain to edge grain drilling. Now say we wanted to take this piece and we wanted it to be like that. Well, we can do that with a dowel wizard. All we have to do is take the dowel wizard and it'll handle up to two inches. Put it on our board, line it up. I didn't draw a line because I don't really care where they come together at. Put the clamp on it. Drill our holes. Put our dowels back in. And there it goes. Perfect. Now, if I wanted to offset it to one side, all I have to do is put a spacer in there, put my clamp on it, Now those holes are offset. In this case, because I used a quarter inch spacer, it's offset a quarter inch off center, as you can see. So if you were, if this was a, like a table leg and an apron, you would be able to have whatever reveal you wanted here based on how big a spacer you would use. That handle's as small as three quarters of an inch. But, for instance, this is a piece of half-inch plywood. And when you put the dowel wizard on there, it's, this piece of wood is too narrow. All you would have to do is put a piece of shim stock on either side, like that. Take the dowel wizard. Span the whole thing. Clamp everything down. Now what you have is you have a dowel centered in this half inch material because it's shimmed out on both sides. Now in this case I've got the 3 8 bushings in this which are too big but I could switch that to the quarter inch bushings, get a quarter inch drill, drill my dowel holes for quarter inch and they'd be centered right in the center of that half inch material. One of the things that they advertise on the Dow Wizard website is its portability. And it is. It just sticks right in my pocket right like that. And when I need it, I can pull it out and start using it. One thing that I didn't show that it also does, get rid of some chips here, is edge to edge joining. You get a couple pieces here. We can drill it like that. Okay. We want to drill it edge to edge. All we have to do is mark where we want our dowels to be. And I can take the dowel wizard, I can put it on there, line up my tick marks, clamp it in place, drill my holes. That's one set of holes. Move the dowel wizard to my other set of holes. Clamp it in place. Now I have the holes drilled for four dowels. Now we're going to take and drill the other piece. And if we can get four, dial, four dowels to line up on the first cut, that says a lot about this jig. There's, there's no measuring. You don't have to measure anything. You just line up your tick marks and drill. Let me just clean up these holes a little bit because like I said, my drill leaves kind of crummy edges. Okay, now I got four dowels here, and you're seeing this live, and I've never done this before. It's the first time I've tried. There we go. Perfect. It lined up perfect. 
Very nice. That's just for the heck of it. Let's see if I turn it 180 degrees. And it still lines up nice. Very nice. So there is basically what the Dowel Wizard does. It, uh, you could also, if you had a wide board, like say you had a board wider than the capacity of the Dowel Wizard, you could still join them like that by drilling the holes on this piece with the Dowel Wizard, holding it, marking the exact location of the holes, drilling them with a drill, and they would probably line up just fine. To change the bushings in the Dowel Wizard, and it's just a matter of unscrewing the bushing. These are hardened steel bushings. And screwing the new bushings in its place. That's how simple it is to change bushings on this. And there it is, equipped with quarter inch bushings. For the kind of work I do, I would probably use the 3 8 more than any of the other sizes, but it's nice to have the, the quarter inch and the 3 16 just in case. Now, so now, the good points on this is its portability. It's lightweight. According to the owner's manual, it only weighs 10 ounces. It seems to be pretty accurate. The only thing I did notice, and this is just a minor thing, if I had when I put this on this way, and I have tick mark, tick mark, and I use the same face of the doweling jig on these two surfaces, this joint is gonna come out absolutely perfect, absolutely dead on. If when I'm drilling this, I either switch the face of the, do the dowel wizard, or get this turned around, I notice that when I put it back together, I get just a little lip. Just, it's not, it's not that much. It's less than a less than a thirty second. But there is a little lip there. But it would sand out. But it's just, it, what that tells me is although these are very very accurate, there is just a little bit of difference in either these pieces or the way it goes back and forth, but it's it's minuscule. That's it's really nitpicking to come up with that. All in all, I think this is a nice tool, but where I would use it the most, where I see the most benefit from, is on face frames. Because it's so easy to use, to me that's the best place to use it. If I was gonna do edge to edge doweling, I don't even know if these are the two that I had lined up. No they're not. Um, if I was gonna do edge to edge doweling I think, I think I would probably use biscuits instead of dowels. Just because I'm more familiar with making joints with biscuits than I am with dowels. But I'll tell you, that came together really nice. I wouldn't be ashamed to use In fact, I might even change my mind about the way I make edge-to-edge -edge joint. Because that is so nice. That's just the only variance there is the variance in the thickness of the wood. Because it's almost dead on. But uh, very nice tool. I'd recommend it. I give it two thumbs up. It's a welcome addition to my shop. Well, the Dowel Wizard gets two thumbs up from me. I really like it for doing face frames. I think that's where it really shines because it's just a matter of putting two pieces of wood together, put a tick mark, line up the tick marks with the Dowel Wizard, and it's easy, 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 easy. And the, and the parts line up perfectly. So if I was going to use it for one, one thing in my shop, it would be for making face frames. It also does a good job in edge joining. So that's been my review of the Dowel Wizard. I'd like to thank Gordon for sending it over to me. Again, I'll put the website for the, for the Dowel Wizard down in the des description. If you would, give me a thumbs up. Or if you feel it's necessary, give me a thumbs down. Please leave me a comment. I reply to all my comments. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. That way you get notifications as I put out new videos. So until next time, this is Paul from Paul's Messy Workshop. And as always, it's messy.